Hi folks, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a couple of short answer questions that often come up in the junior cycle graphics exam. The questions I'm actually going to focus on this video are this one down here, this one here, and this one here, okay? These three questions, uh, this, video, this question here is based on a parabola I just printed out based on some um, revision that I'm giving to one of my classes right now. Now the questions they are themselves, okay, these three in particular, have all to do with an enlargement, okay? It's essentially what it's saying here, if I was to just read out this one here, it says the figure shows the outline of a house, okay, and we can see the outline of a house, A to B being the base, and then obviously it goes up, down, then up at an angle, down at an angle, and back to A. Draw a new, new outline similar to the given house with the length AB increased to AB1. So this is often a question that you get posed with in uh, junior cycle graphics, uh, as a short answer question, okay? And lots of students make, um, I suppose, little errors on them uh, when it's actually quite easy if you just follow the sequence, okay, or the right steps. So I'm going to start off by doing this one here, then I'm going to progress on to this one, and then I'm finally going to do this one, okay? So, starting with the one here down on the bottom. I'm just going to just read into the screen there a little bit better so you can see it. So it says here, a 3D model of a drip tray Sorry, a 3D model of the drip tray removed from the machine is shown below. Okay, so this came from um, a mock paper, I think, last year, okay? This is a drip tray that would often come out, obviously, it would slide out from underneath whatever uh, drink was being poured. Also shown is the plan of the drip tray. So what they're saying is the, the view down here is the plan view of this drip tray, okay? And then it's saying draw a new drip tray similar to the given one with the length AB increased to AB1. So what they're saying is the distance for AB is now out to AB1, okay? So this distance here has increased out to here. By this distance increasing, what you have to assume is everything else will increase as well proportionally. So how would we do that? First of all, we just have to recognize some of the most common points on it. Now, first of all, A is going to stay in a stationary position. B has now moved out to B1. So that distance is after increasing here, okay? But by that distance increasing here, what you have to assume then is that the actual radius of the circle is also going to increase proportionally, okay? Likewise with the distance up to here and so forth. Now, the one that I would actually take note of here is the center. What's the relationship between B and the center? Well, what I know about B is B to the center are perfectly a vertical line. So likewise with B1, from B1, it has to be a vertical line up there, and somewhere up along that vertical line is the center, okay? Now, obviously, on the day of the exam, you're going to be using um, a T-square, okay, where you'll be able to use this. If you ever run into an issue where you don't have a T-square, what you can often use is, is two set squares, like this, set up maybe the 30, 60, 60 degree set square on the line underneath here, use it as a guide, and then what I can use is my other set square, like this, sitting on top. Now I can get a perfectly vertical line. So from B1, what I want to do is I want to travel up lovely construction line like that. Okay, somewhere up along that line is going to be center. Now, some people might assume the center is still going to be here. That is not correct. So where the new center is going to be is from A, because A is in the stationary position, stay in the same position. As we increase out to B to B1, I have to increase the center like that as well. So from A through the center is going to identify to me where my new center is along that B1 line. Now that I have the new center, I also have a point B, or now in this case B1, that is on the circumference of the circle. So using that as a guide, I can now put in my semicircle. So from here, down to B1, being my radius like that, I'm now going to put in my semicircle. So there we have the semicircle put in. I'll heavy in this little bit here. Okay, and just ever so lightly extend on my construction line out to there. Okay, now what's important here is to note Obviously, A line is going to continue straight up. And then from this point here, it's now going to go horizontally across like this one did here. I have to represent that going across as well. 
So you might have to do maybe a little bit of sliding set squares. Parallel with this line, if you want. Alternatively, I could just take the distance on my compass, and I'll show you in a second. There we go. There is that edge there. Now the other way I could have done that was I could have taken the distance, put the fiber back into the compass here, from here out to here, could have taken that distance because I've now got that distance which would be the same as this distance. Likewise the way it was down here, this distance here was the same as this distance. So when we increase it proportionally, they would be the same as well. Okay, so that's how you do it there. It might seem like a hard question, but when you break it down, okay, it's not that bad. We use A as the guideline to extend out all the other points, and we're just trying to find a relationship. So the center point here was really important. So as B went out to B1, I knew the center point had to be vertically above B1. So when I extended that line up, and then from A, I connected the line out through the center of the original one, it helped me locate the center of the new one. Okay, so that is the shape increase proportionally from AB out to AB1. So that's that first one done. Now, once I apply those methods, on to the second problem. So this is the one we're going to start with here, and then we'll move on to the house one. So in this problem here, it says here, the figure uh, below shows the design of a lampshade. So it says here, draw a new shade similar to the given shade with the length AB increased to AB1. So very similar thing. Now in this one here, I'm actually just going to use a little bit of labels and we'll try and find relationships. So if this is AB, I'm now going to find C. This is D. E and F. And as always, the only one that's going to stay stationary is our A. Okay? So everything is going to increase from A. A to B is now going to be from A to B, won't B1. Likewise, uh, C will be increased out, as will F, as will E, and as will D. Okay? And that's what we're going to have to work out. So it's identifying the relationships. So I know A connects horizontally to B, which is now at B1. B connects down vertically to C. So once I've found B1, I hopefully will be able to find C. C then connects to D. Now what's important here is the angle here, okay, is going to be parallel once we just increase it. C connects to F. Okay, so once I have A, obviously F is somewhere. So F is probably just going to be straight below. It's probably going to increase that way. And then F connects to E. Likewise, F to E is going to be parallel once I get the new shape. So to be able to do that, first thing I'll do is I will heavy in from A to, to B1. Because obviously I'm increasing the size of it. Now I know from B to C is going down. So now from my B1 to what I'm going to call now my new C1, that is also going to go down. So a little bit of sliding set squares here. Okay, obviously on the day of your exam, if this is set up with a T square and set square, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. So down to B1 or C1. So somewhere down along that line is C1. So like we did in the previous question, where A is the stationary point, I need to find where C has increased. So, use a red bar of construction. So A true C. And where that cuts through the line, C is now out here at C1. Okay, now the next thing I have to do, that's very helpful to me, I can find F as well while I'm at it because I can see this is a rectangular shape and C is in line with F. So now that I've found C1, I can go parallel to the line A, B1. So just using sliding set squares. Somewhere across that line. And then if I just extend A, F down, I have now found F1. So there's F1. Now heavy that in. I'll heavy over as far as C1. From F1 to C1 is now heavy. And then from C1 to B1. Okay. So as you can see, the rectangle has increased all by doing a line from A through C. And I found C1. From C1 I was able to go and find F1 by just extending this down, and then obviously C1 connected up to B1. Now the last bit, and this is I suppose the tricky part, is we're going to have to get C1 to D1, and then F1 to E1. Okay, and obviously E and D will connect. So, 
what's this line here? I'm going to actually have to go parallel to CD from C1. Okay. So to do that, so it has to follow the same shape that was in front of it. It's just after increasing in scale or in size. So from C out to D, I'm going to go parallel sliding set squares to C1. And somewhere down along that line there is going to be D1. I'm going to do the exact same just to have it ready from FE. I should do it this way. So you can see the sheet is just moving a little bit here. So there's E to F. I'm going to go parallel to that now from F1. Okay. So follows the same relationship. Okay. Now what I need to do though is I need to find the exact location of either E or D. So I'm going to use D as my guide. So from A, which is a stationary point, extend out from D, through D I should say. And now for D has actually extended out and cut through this parallel line, I have now found D1. Okay. What's the relationship between D and E? They are a horizontal line. In this case, just because I'm using it on a worksheet, I'm going to have to do a little bit of sliding set squares here. And where that comes across and cuts through this line will help locate to me E1. There is, there is my object completed, okay? Where I have enlarged the structure that was originally A, B, C, D, E, and F. It is now A to B1 to C1 to D1, and then I should say to E1, and then finally to F1 and back up to A. As you notice, A has stayed in its original position, okay? So that's the second question done there, guys. We're going to apply those same methods up to this problem up here. Only difference is the shape has changed to uh, the outline of a house. So what we have to do is the figure shows the outline of a house, draw a new outline similar to the given house with the length AB increased to AB1. So first thing I'm going to do, like I did previously, is I'm going to extend out. AB1 is right there. I'm just going to note that. And I'm actually going to use lettering, once again, or indexing. So I'm going to call this C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, I put them on the inside, could have put them on the outside. So, next one I have to do is note the relationships. So first of all, A to G was here in a vertical line, so I assume A to G is actually just going to continue on. Likewise, if you think down here, A to F was a vertical line, so it just went down. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I might just extend this one on up here. Don't know exactly how far just yet. Have to work out the rest of it. Okay. Now from B to C, same principle applies. B to C is a vertical line. So B1 to C1 would also make sense. It should be a vertical line. Just have to move there, guys. So B1 to C1, our new position for C1, when we find it, will also be a vertical line. So just using the sheet as a guide. You can see how I'm doing that there. And from B1, I'm going to go straight up. Now, if I wanted to find C1, remember A is the one that's staying in a stationary position. So from A, if I extend it through C, likewise the way B was extended on, A through B to give me B1, I'm going to extend A through C. You can see where it's after cutting here. I have now found C1. Okay. Same principle is apply, going to apply for D. A is going to extend through D. Okay, what's the relationship between C and D? It is a horizontal line. So from C, I'm going to go horizontally across. So once again, I do a little bit of sliding set squares. So there's my horizontal line. I'll actually heavy that in now. Start to build the object up. So there is 
d1 okay now what's important uh, in, sorry the relationship then between d and e is very important because e is directly below d so now that i have d1 i can go parallel to the edge c1 b1 because that's a vertical line this line in set squares so somewhere down from d1 somewhere down there is going to be e1 so how do i find that once again from a through e i've now located e1 once again i can heavy that in take it in your stages if you want obviously you can come back and heavy it all in together now the next thing i'm just going to note and this is the important bit what's the relationship between sorry moving into the center screen what's the relationship between e and g the two of them are at the exact same height as one another so now that i have e or I should say e1 i could do a bit of a horizontal line from e1 to come across to help me find g1 so using the line on the sheet that's already there bit of sliding set squares now obviously once again as i said if you have a t-square set up perfectly on the day make life a little bit easier for you i've now found that point right there which i'm going to call g1 there we go so there's that one and i suppose the last bit we're left with then is obviously figuring out the pitch of the roof from g to f or alternatively from e to f or in this case g1 to f1 and e1 to f1 what is the relationship between the pitch of the roof okay it has to be going in the exact same angle so i can do sliding set squares from g to f and then e to f okay and i can do them from e1 and g1 so setting up your set square parallel to the gf line and from g1 do a line parallel to that okay to find the exact point of where it finishes in this case f1 i could do it two ways from ef i could go parallel to ef from e1 and where that will cut through will give me the point or alternatively like i've done with all the other points from a i could go through f extend it on you can see where it hits right there at that point up there i'm now going to call f1 So I can now heavy that in. And then finally from there to here, F1 down to E1. Okay. And as you can see, the line from F1 to E1 is parallel to the line F to E. And there you have it, guys. That there is another enlargement question where we increase the scale of the house or the size of the house from AB out to AB1. And you can see where a was stationary everything was just extended out through us to locate it what was also important in all these questions was i noted the relationship of the lines okay so indexing when you can is very very helpful there i noted the relationship from b to c was a vertical line therefore from b1 to c1 had to be a vertical line c to d was a horizontal line so same principle c1 to d1 had to be horizontal and it was simply a case of finding where it cut through then by extending out from a Okay, so that one there was really helpful. You can see it was applied here. And then I suppose the one we did at the very, very start on this one here, the only one we had to do was obviously through the center. Okay, these ones were probably a little bit more work than this one. And you can see the difference was, I'll see how much it increased in scale based on the center going out there because our radius increased as well. Okay, so that's three questions there done, guys. I'll just zoom out there. Based on the topic of enlargements, which as I said, often come up as a short answer question, okay? So I hope you found that helpful.